Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Uh, we will begin with today's episode about God's justice. This is Invitation to Happiness, Season 2, Episode 8. After the show, I will have some commentary. So please tune in for this one-hour program. First, let's take a bow to the Gohonzon. The following program is sponsored by Happy Science. Hello and thank you for accepting our invitation to happiness. Ryuho Okawa is a global visionary, renowned spiritual leader, and international best-selling author. With his deep spiritual insight, wisdom, and compassion, Okawa is committed to guide people to true happiness and create a better world. To accomplish this, he founded Happy Science Group in Japan in 1986, which is now a global movement in over 100 countries. His vision and message to the world goes beyond the differences of race and language. Together, throughout this program, we will be exploring ways to attain true happiness from a spiritual perspective and how you can create a better world starting from within. Today's topic is about God's justice. At times like these, in times of international turmoil, we sometimes wonder whether or not God is guiding us to true justice. In a world that seems unjust and unfair, how do we know who decides the ultimate justice for humankind? Before we go further, let's ask the people in New York who they think decides the ultimate justice. The Supreme Court? I uh, know you're not. I joking um, I mean in my in my world it's all it's all judges uh, who decide those things and and who determine where my cases go but or, and, and juries of course but juries and judges um, but I suspect you're asking a more metaphysical question um, for me it would be human beings who wear the black robes and who sit in the jury box I do think there's a higher power and personally I, I think that it's given us a good framework for a civilization um, I've been in places where, uh, I've been in the military and I've been in places where there is no rule of law and there is no peace and it's, um, you know, we take it for granted here uh, in, in more developed countries where that framework has been established. So I do think, I do think when we honor that, the higher power honors us by giving us a peace, more peaceful society. Definitely here, um, human beings, but I feel like there is a higher power more than what we're able to comprehend. It may be, I feel like that whole depiction of God may not be as accurate, but I feel like there is something higher up than this more than us. Because there's definitely things that happen that has no explanation. If there's a God, I'd certainly believe in God, but I do believe in, if not specific idea of God, the ultimate prevailing force of love in the, in the universe is the prevailing thing that ties us. So I think love, love is the, prevailing force of justice. Today's lecture, entitled The Way to the Truth, which Okawa gave publicly in December 2016, is based on a macro perspective of human happiness, which is the most vital missions of happy science in establishing God's justice in this world. With this in mind, let us listen to this lecture with a macro perspective. In last year's El Cantare celebration. I said that this year, 2016, would be the year of revolution. The one with the biggest impact was probably the victory of Mr. Donald Trump in the U.S. presidential election. People may say different things about this, but we have come to an age when we must call it the Trump Revolution. We published a book on a spiritual interview with the guardian spirit of Donald Trump in January of this year. 
In that book, we revealed that Donald Trump was the first president of the United States, George Washington, in a past life. The conclusion we drew from this was that Donald Trump would be elected as the president in November. This was our prediction. If George Washington were to appear in the U.S. today, it would only be to revolutionize the U.S. So if Mr. Trump didn't win, then the result of the plan expected by heaven would have gone back to square one. In Japanese politics, the economic reform through Abenomics began smoothly, but the economy gradually lost its pace. There was only one point to this. We repeatedly suggested that in order to make Abenomics succeed, the consumption tax must not be raised. But they did. This led to the fall of Abenomics and a loss of Japanese economic growth. The power of wisdom is very important. If your foresight is wrong, it can even cause a country to perish. We must know this harsh reality. From now on, we must ascertain the direction we should head in and make our decision accordingly. We must choose what we need and abandon what we must. This is important. This establishment of justice is what I have been speaking to you about this year. Japan is now missing principles in its politics. Politics without philosophy is disgraceful. Political messages that aren't worth those of a world leader are truly embarrassing. If so, Japan must organize its own thoughts and work to accomplish what it must. I'm deeply sorry about this and plan to work with indomitable resolve for the rest of my life to teach the righteous political, economic, religious, cultural, future industrial and educational policies that are in accordance with the teachings of God throughout Japan and the world. First, I will protect the peace of Asia. If things go on as they are now, a huge military clash will occur in Asia within the next five years. To put it clearly, this will come with Mr. Trump's rise to presidency. From the view of the left-wing mass media, it may seem as though the times have changed for the worse. However, seen from the perspective of a longer time span, this will be creative destruction too. Japan must work with the U.S. to rebuild national power and clearly show where the central pillar of the world exists. We must reconfirm that democracy comes from God and that democratic prosperity comes from God's children coming together. When I began the activities of happy science, the population of the world was only about 5 billion. Now it has exceeded 7 billion. The population of the world is increasing faster than our teachings are spreading. The most positive thing sought in an age like this is to invent a constructive way 
to have the vast number of people in the world live without starving and to have them live happily. Basically, I am indicating this direction. However, looking at the past, something else happens in times like this. One is war. Another is catastrophe or a natural disaster. These are prepared as our options. We are always walking between such options. In this era of international turmoil, we need strong leadership to guide the nation and the world in the direction of ultimate peace and prosperity. Although the emergence of President Trump can be seen as polarizing, as Okawa mentioned, it can also be called a Trump revolution and may be one step towards a new future. True democracy comes from God, and only by moving forward together as children of God can we achieve true democratic prosperity. Let's continue to listen to Okawa's lecture. China has the ambition to become a superpower by military hegemony and has challenged the U.S. During President Obama's time, U.S. power declined. However, Mr. Trump's time won't be the same. He will stop China's hegemony. This is the true meaning of the Trump revolution. We must not miss this. This will gradually become apparent from next year. His true intentions will gradually be known. China has a missile that no other country in the world has. This missile has a range of about 1,000 miles and can destroy a U.S. aircraft carrier by piercing through its deck from above. Only China has this. The U.S. must come up with a countermeasure against this missile. The method to do this will be Star Wars. Next will come the age of space wars. It will be a race to destroy artificial satellites and space stations. It will start from a battle to disrupt computers and other related technologies. Japan will be left out from all of this. This is the truth behind the next war, which is already counting down. In short, a war could begin and end by a satellite or a space station suddenly being destroyed in space without having to cross fire on Earth. But we must be able to see how the future should unfold. Of course, I do not hate China. It's the country that produced the great Confucius. It's also the country of Taoism in a country that long enjoyed prosperity through Buddhism. I have the strong desire to change China into a country of the truth. I'm not only talking about political democracy. I want to make China into a nation that can maintain order by giving people the freedom of religion, the freedom of speech, and the freedom of expression that are based on Buddha's truth or God's truth. In Russia, the Russian Orthodox Church is regaining power. I want to promote their religious reform even further by helping them from Japan. In addition, India's religion is left behind the times, one of them being Hinduism. Out of the Indian population of 1.3 billion, Nearly one billion people are Hindu. It's a polytheistic religion, and that is fine. But the reason India is behind the times lies in the lack of rational thinking in their polytheistic religion, not the tolerance in it. I will fire a new thought that unifies rational thinking and polytheism into the Indian continent. 
This is the job of happy science. Moreover, I want to make the Asian seas the seas of peace as soon as possible without going into a large extended war. I also want to change African countries into wealthy countries. The world's population grew from 5 billion to 7 billion since the time Happy Science started. It will eventually approach 10 billion. If the liberal idea that flows from the Obama administration to Ms. Clinton had continued to prevail, then the idea that everyone will be happy by taking money from the rich and distributing to the poor as social welfare would still be the norm. This idea would be somewhat rational if the world's population remained the same. However, if it's increasing, then taking money from the rich and distributing it to the poor will not work forever. That's why, while we need to change how the politics, economy, and trade work on the national level, we also need to nurture a lot of people who can succeed and prosper by changing their ways of thinking and their minds on the individual level all over the world. Right now, the EU, a union of European countries, is a union of the weak. Its central concept is social welfare. There are only a few wealthy countries. Countries wishing to join the EU are poor. From there, many refugees are coming in. What they need to do is to progress and prosper through self-help. And this idea of self-help must turn into altruism not just egoism. People who produce results through self-help are apt to become egoists. To this, I have been saying, to love is to give in the laws of the sun from the very beginning of happy science. Those who think to love is to take will never be able to understand those words. But those who find the words to love is to give, to be true, should be able to understand the meaning. People who improve, train, and develop themselves, who become successful, wealthy, and even make their country wealthy, can make the world wealthy too. We must take the Trump revolution as a springboard and spread what we've been teaching so far. The individual's way to self-transformation and enlightenment by changing his mind is also the way to make the world the land of love, the land of happiness and utopia on earth. We must choose this way. We are already active in more than 100 countries around the world. With that in mind, I want to ask the people in Japan and all over the world, please give us wings. We are a group insisting that we have the duty to make the world happy, not the right. We are a group with the obligation to make the world happy. So people all over Japan and all over the world, please give happy science 
the wings to fly one level higher. Next year is the year of the laws of mission. Let's spread the truth. Gain a lot of supporters and change the world into a place filled with love and happiness. Let's give our best. Thank you very much. The important point here is that the philosophy of social welfare has its limits when dealing with an increase in population like we are facing now. The ultimate solution to this issue is the spirit of self-help. Self-help combined with altruism is the direction that happy science advocates. Through this mindset, not only can we make ourselves prosper, but also the country and the world. Let us now hear Okawa's message to America which was given on October 2nd, 2016 in New York. Hello, everyone. Hey, okay. I came back. Thank you for coming today. Mm, to tell the truth, mm, uh, New, York, New York is uh, a little different, I think so. Uh, it's very, in some meaning, it's silent. Uh, in some meaning, uh, uh, no, uh, Vitality, uh, and in some meaning, uh, no philosophy. Uh, I, I found that. Uh, American problem, one of the American problem is uh, you have the tendency uh, of uh, hating or uh, have the envy uh, for wealthy people. But from the uh, standpoint of the world, if America, the United States of America, uh, hesitate to uh, uh, let the people uh, be wealthy, uh, it is the end of the America. Uh, we think so. You have uh, the uh, mission. Uh, to make a uh, new dream uh, for the world. But uh, this is just uh, missing, I felt, in New York. So now I insist that you uh, transform into the another country. Uh, you have new philosophy problem uh, because uh, you earn a lot, <laughs> of course, and you became rich, of course. But after that, pragmatism only is a, a very miserable for humankind because we are made from God. God's desire is more greater than pragmatism. In terms of uh, the uh, earthly meaning, you must decide your freedom, your justice, and your happiness. Don't think about your country only. You are the leader of the world. Don't disregard this point. Please, beyond America, see uh, from the standpoint of the earth. Ah, three, happiness. Uh, it's very important. Uh, you need a new philosophy for that. It's a definition of God. It's a real meaning of God. 
believing God is good, but what's the meaning of God's will? It's a starting point of new philosophy. This is your mission. And this is what I want to say today. Be great, greater. Uh, with uh, great power comes <laughs> a great uh, responsibility. Uh, you American people have great responsibility for the world. Please keep on your mind and this uh, truth. Uh, and that is the conclusion of the lecture. Like individuals, countries have God-given missions too. And so America must be America. America must represent as the great nation blessed by God that honors freedom and justice in order to bring happiness to all people. The ultimate justice comes from God, and we must never cease to quest for the way to the truth, the way to God. At Happy Science, you can listen to many of Okawa's other lectures related to today's topic. The books covered in today's lecture are available at major bookstores, including Barnes & Noble, Amazon.com, and at Happy Science. For more information, please contact a Happy Science location near you. If you would like to learn more about Okawa and the teachings of Happy Science, visit invitationtohappiness.org or call us at 929-929. Three two three four seven three seven. Once again, thank you for accepting our invitation and for joining us throughout Season 2 of Invitation to Happiness. We hope you've enjoyed the journey and have gained a deeper sense of happiness by adding spiritual value to your life. Please stay tuned for updates on future episodes. Until then, from all of us at Happy Science, stay happy. Thank you for accepting our invitation to happiness. Happy Science is not a religion solely for the Japanese people. It is a religion for the world. It is a religion for humankind. The preceding program was sponsored by Happy Science. Well, thank you everyone for watching today. So this will be the conclusion of our Season 2 series. Next week we begin Season 3. And Season 3 is a very new concept. We'll have three MCs, myself, Mariko, and Yushi. And we'll be discussing Master's teachings from a great perspective of emotion, passion, and faith, as well as exploring the truth deeper to try and understand why Master is talking about what he's, what he's speaking about and why those messages pertain to us here in New York. So I hope you can watch it, and I hope that you'll be able to share this with all your friends. Uh, we, we really wish to spread this truth in this time of coronavirus, in this time of turmoil, to help save people, to help awaken people, and to help people realize that now is the time for a new religion and the new God, El Cantare. So I thank you so much for your support. Today I want to discuss further about the episode uh, 8 contents and so that we can understand God's justice at a deeper level. 
So what is this phrase, God's justice? Well, just thinking about this phrase brings us from the micro perspective to the macro perspective. We tend to think about ourselves. We tend to think about our physical needs, our family's needs, and our workplace needs. However, by thinking about the world and by thinking about God's justice, we are able to transcend our selfishness. We are able to transcend our worldly desires and attachments. And what we do is we're able to cultivate a very refined and big state of mind that is able to understand other people's emotions, able to understand other people's cultures, and able to understand why God wishes the world to be the way it is and to be improved from the way it is. So by thinking about the meaning and purpose of life, we come to this conclusion in happy science. The purpose of life is soul training and the, and to strive to create utopia on this planet. The utopia that happy science advocates is not a philosophical and idealistic utopia. We're actually trying to bring it into reality. We're actually trying to realize God's will in this three-dimensional material world. And through these things like politics, economics, academics, and media, we can translate heaven's beauty and heaven's happiness into this material world and lead so many people to true happiness that transcends this world and the next. So we seek these principles of infinite soul training and infinite happiness in this world. And once we realize that, we come to the understanding of these two fundamental principles that run throughout the universe. Those are harmony and progress. You might think these two come into conflict with each other. Harmony tends to be at this level, the level of horizontal connections. Pro uh, prosperity and progress tends to be in the vertical direction, but by understanding progress and harmony, how they come together and how they unite, then we can get to the source of the universe that leads to happiness, the source of what creates utopia in this world. So if we think about not just our own happiness, but the happiness of other people and this planet, then we get to this idea of how do we get there? So Master Okawa says we should focus on something deeper, something more, something that leads to enlightenment. And through our enlightenment, that connects with self-help. Self-help is the idea that we do not seek happiness from the government. We do not seek happiness from the outside world, but it's a transformation to build utopia in our mind. And then within our mind, we can spread that to other people, making the world a place of prosperity and peace. And there's a lot of contradictions in this world. This world seems unjust and unfair. So who decides the ultimate justice in such a world? Also, how do we know what God thinks the biggest problem is in the world today. And lastly, how do we get to that ultimate ideal when so many people in history have tried and failed to reach utopia? This world is full of contradictions. However, there's only one being who can decide the ultimate justice. That is the supreme God of the earth. It is not the supreme court. It is not judges and juries. It is not presidents and ministers. Only God can decide the ultimate source of wisdom and justice because God is the great creator. God is the one who made the laws 
that govern this universe. So it's only God who fully comprehends the principles and the laws that underlie all decisions and all forms of wisdom and justice in this world. Yet, happy science does not advocate theocracy. Actually, God allows his children to make decisions on his behalf. That is the origin of democracy. Democracy is not something where we cut off our connection to God. Instead, we must carefully and soberly think how God would want this world to be through the process of democracy, through the process of communication with each other and deep contemplation and deliberation about the problems that the world faces. In addition, God allows different regions and cultures to develop uniquely, depending on their intended characteristics. We are always a part of a great civilization experiment. What does that mean? That means that God allows Islamic nations, Asian nations, African nations, American nations to develop uniquely depending on their characteristics and culture. He has a unique mission for each country, which is why we heard Master Okawa say, America should be America. What he means by that is that America has a unique mission given by God and that the country and its people should strive in that unique direction. In fact, angels and archangels are born into different countries and cultures, and they represent different aspects of God's light. But all of them should come together as one to come closer to the source, the great light of God. In addition, there's a big problem in the world today. God has clarified through happy science what the biggest problem is in the world today. There is currently a giant totalitarian dictatorship in East Asia, and it is about to become fully imperialistic. On Saturday, the 22nd of August, we went to Union Square for a peaceful protest called Global Freedom Movement. There, I gave a speech about the dangers of China's current regime and about the advocation of liberation to Hong Kong and its people. In fact, Master Okawa has clarified that communism is a religion created by the devil and it's one of his biggest life missions to stop communism and its spreading around the world. In fact, God does not allow 1.4 billion people to be under control of the devil, communism. That is why happy science advocates freedom, democracy, and faith. It is not that we wish for one person to win and one person to lose. We're not thinking about the differences of political leaders on a personal basis. In fact, we wish to stop the devil's spreading of communism and to allow the countries of freedom, democracy, and faith to prosper because this will lead to the greatest happiness of the greatest number of people. Actually, God has a system called God's management, and he prepares countermeasures when dangerous movements start to develop. That is why he sends current leaders to different countries to prevent the spread of this communist dictatorship. And it is our responsibility to stand up and advocate that we will not allow them to cede, we will not cede even an inch to their imperialistic conquest. We stand strong and united as one. In fact, there's this spiritual truth that devils 
do not like to work as a team. Devils like to work alone. However, angels and bodhisattvas in heaven work together as one, and through their teamwork, they're able to conquer all kinds of evil. That is why we must come together as God's children, hand in hand, and stand strong against the devil and make it clear that we will not allow the devil's way of thinking to spread. Once we show our firm resolution and passion to stand on that side, the devils will have nowhere to spread. They will have to leave this world. So that gets us to this question, how do we re reach utopia? Actually, utopia is not found in one way of thinking that will just spread to all people. Actually, utopia begins within the mind of each individual. So when that comes into this world, it states that social welfare can never completely solve the world's problems. In fact, big government always leads to decreased freedoms and more bureau bureaucracy, which leads to incompetence. Problems can never be completely solved if they simply quench a temporary need. It's true the human body needs food, water, and shelter. However, that should not be the mission of humankind. We are not here simply to survive a little bit longer. We are here to create utopia on this planet. Therefore, a kind of self-help must be constantly promoted. And also, politics and religion must reflect eternal values and virtues. Happy Science is trying to restore the world of virtue into the religious sphere and make religion something noble and respected once again because the ideal of religion is very much virtuous. Religions over thousands of years of history have sometimes strayed from their path of virtue. However, we wish to again puncture these ideas into the society and into the world. Also, light must be spread into each area of society and darkness must be extinguished. So that means in the world of mass media, in the world of Hollywood, in the world of academics and education, in the world of charity, in the world of all these different types of movements, business, politics, religion, we have to shine God's light once again. We must clarify what is light and what is darkness. We must clarify how we can really make the world a better place through our movements, not just thinking about money, not just thinking about our business or our movements, temporary success, but why we exist and why we're put on this planet. And lastly, happy science always advocates a simple and effective path to create utopia. That is called the fourfold path, love, wisdom, self-reflection, and progress. Wherever these values spread in their correct understanding, that place becomes improved. That place becomes more of a utopia. This has been proved over long, long history, long before we current humankind tend to understand. Human history is something that goes back a long, long time. And wherever Buddha or the saviors came to be born, those places pursued values of love, wisdom, self-reflection, and progress. And when those values spread, those places became utopia. So we wish to spread utopia and that is the reason d'etre of happy science. In the Dharma of the Right Mind, the second um, sutra, we have words of aspiration for enlightenment, the Pledge of Discipline. That sutra says that 
the mission of the Sangha is to create utopia or to lead to utopia. It is the vehicle where Buddha can operate and Buddha's teachings can operate to build utopia on this planet. So those who are part of Happy Science and are watching this live stream today, please help us create utopia. Please support our movement. We need action, action, and action right now in this difficult time for humankind. That will lead us on the path to utopia and that will lead the world to happiness. So that concludes my lecture. I ask if there's any questions from the phone calling or from the room. I will check if I have any questions. I know that someone had asked about is Christianity and Christ the only way? Is Christ the only way to build a proper country on Judeo-Christian values? Someone I spoke to recently. And actually, this is a big limitation in America's mindset. Of course, Judeo-Christian values over 2,000 years have produced great results. However, they have lack and limitation because they cannot reach 7 billion people. They cannot be imposed on 7 billion people. We've seen military conquest. We've seen things like wars created in the name of Christianity or Islam or other religions. When we start to skew the perspective of religion and make it something from realizing God's wish to imposing teachings based on limited understanding onto other people, we distort the original philosophy and understanding of the teachings. And so God does not desire wars to occur in the name of religion. God wishes that religion will be the force to overcome conflicts and wars. He wishes for us to use the teachings to make our minds more expanded, to think about world justice and God's wish for the world. And so we believe the mission of religion and the mission of happy science is to help stop wars from starting and to be that force of understanding and spiritual tolerance based on God's fundamental principles. I'm not aware of any other questions from the phone calling. Is there any questions from the room? Do we have any questions about God's justice? Perhaps no. Well, we do have an episode coming up next week, The New Resurrection. That is Season 3, Episode 1 of the new series, Invitation to Happiness, Season 3. This episode includes a lecture which is so profound in its significance. It is something we have been blessed with the opportunity to watch. The Savior was created, or the Savior was manifested through an experience in 2004. And next week's lecture will help you realize how that came about. How a man who transcended human existence was living with no heartbeat with no pulse, how he conquered death and came with the spirit to lay down his life for the truth. In other words, die for the truth. And how 
the Savior, decided to come and spread his teachings around the world through a global lecture tour and through his unconquerable spirit. So I hope you can watch season three, episode one next week and, and let all your friends and family know that this will be showing. So that concludes today's lecture. Do we have any other questions? We did have one from a caller. Okay. Okay, we have some very juicy questions, so thank you to our audience. Firstly, about equality. Well, Happy Science has clearly advocated two different ideas. We strive for equality of opportunity. What that means is we believe people of all races, all nations, and all different backgrounds, whether that be men or women, or anything to have the same opportunity or the same starting point that leads to true freedom however when we have the idea of equality of outcome we get to this concept of who decides where the equality should come from basically people of the past have all who have tried for equality of outcome have given all the power to a big government to impose strict punishments on success through taxes, through even ideas in Soviet Union and China of killing the elites and the successful, punishing those who have high elite educations and high educational backgrounds. And so we do strive for racial equality and happy science, I mean, one of Master Okawa's biggest missions is to overcome this idea of white supremacy and then establish true racial equality. However, that racial equality is an equality of opportunity. All people being given the same opportunity as children of God, children of Buddha. And so we wish for that equality. And, and we have conducted spiritual messages, or Master Okawa has, of President Donald Trump his guardian spirit. That was in episode eight in the program today. We have this book, The Trump Secret, and we will find Trump's true intention, his true subconscious mind in this book. And here we can find in chapter four, the Trump card, he says in January of 2016 that he loves all people of the world, whether that be Muslim people or any people, he loves all people of the world. He welcomes them, he welcomes them to change their attitude to change their thinking pattern and become real Americans. So what he's trying to say is, although we welcome people of all backgrounds, of all nations, of all types of ideas, they must become Americans if they want to live in America. Basically, it's the idea of when you, when you pledge to enter this country and you obtain citizenship through passing the test, they have you raise your hand and swear to renounce allegiance to any other country and to become an American. That is the idea that he portrays in this book. And so I think that idea is not so foreign to most of our audience. The second question is about corporations and tax policy. Of course, 
Happiness Realization Party and Happy Science have been advocating low taxes. And some people say that will benefit corporations. However, we are not just advocating a corporate tax, but a personal tax, a consumption tax, and taxes on all different types of people. What that means is, if you've read Friedrich Hayek, he says that high taxes lead us to become serfs to the king, serfs to the government, and tax reduction leads us to real freedom. So we cannot have social freedom without economic freedom. And true freedom in the economic meaning is tax reduction because the money belongs to the citizens, not to the government. The money does not belong to a, a wise and great political leader who thinks that they can act on behalf of the population. It is much more filled with wisdom to allow the population to control their own money, to control their own economic meaning and their own economic purchases. So Happy Science has found that this supply side economics or this tax reduction policy leads to true freedom as God's children and allows us to fully pursue soul training according to our life mission, which is one of the main purposes and benefits of our life. So I hope that those could clarify some of those difficult issues. And basically, Happy Science's idea about politics is very broad-minded. So we are not just affirming on one perspective. We're trying to take into a part different accounts and different multitudes of ideas and philosophies and incorporate them into a collective whole based on this idea of creating Buddha land utopia on this world. So thank you for your questions. I always appreciate it. And that does conclude today's lecture. So I thank you very much for tuning in and then be sure to watch next week and share it out to as many people as possible. Let's take a bow to the Kohanzan to finish today's session.